This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. Let me go ahead and show you what Jack has been thinking. He's cracking me up because if you watch, he's taking a few steps back. And I want to show you what I've been working on since the last time we videotaped. But what you need to keep in mind is that this is a conversation between the two of us. And I think sometimes people make the mistake of thinking it's a one-way conversation. I'm the teacher, the horse is the student, and all the horse does is listen. But the horse is the student, but the student gets to ask questions. And so if you just noticed when we, when we hit record, Jack started backing up. And watch when I go to ask him to move forward, what, he, how, what he's having for a reaction. He's been having it for the last few days, so I'm guessing it's still going to be there. Watch just like right there. You can tell he's thinking about going backwards. He's thinking about backing up. I'm going to do nothing with my hands. I'm just going to step on the gas with my legs, which is supposed to be mean forward. But notice Jack is going backwards. I'll tell you why right after I get him unstuck. All I'm going to do is keep bumping back here until he goes forward, which is the correct answer. But what Jack is saying, now watch what Jack's doing. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing any of this. But what Jack is saying, I'm not doing it with my legs. I'm not doing it. I was just stepping on the gas. What Jack is saying is Jack's been saying, teacher, Stacy, you've been really consistent. And every day we end on one of two things. We either end on backing up or we end on spinning to the right. Can we be done now? <laughs> we are right at the very beginning, and the first question my student is asking is, if I do the thing you really, really like right now, how short can this ride be? Now, I think two mistakes that you see happen is, one, people just miss that that's happening at all or why it's happening, but the other thing is they punish the student for asking the question because technically what he did there, and he'll probably do it again here, is wrong. If I'm, if I'm asking him to go forward, he shouldn't be backing up. And people will get real offended, and the, but what they'll end up doing on accident is they'll end up shutting the student down. The student's not allowed to ask questions. Now, where do I draw my line? He's not allowed to cross a safety line. If this starts to become a safety issue, then I'll raise more of a fuss, and I'll raise more of a fuss before it's a safety issue. But for this last few days, and maybe for the next week, I'm gonna let him ask me some of those questions, and I'm just going to gently discourage him. And then eventually, either if he steps it up in a bad way, then I'll really come down on discouraging him. Or it'll just gently go away. But I just I think that's one of my favorite pieces of the training is figuring out why he's having these unusual reactions. So I'm going to ask him to go forward now. And I'm just going to, I'm going to pretend, you know, just like I was before, I'm just going to stay persistent with it. And I'm going to ride on forward. But I understand where his question is coming from and it makes me laugh. Let's jump into showing you where I, where I was and what I've been working on before. What I'd really like to do is switch bits. And I'm in a smooth snaffle right now. I rode him on and off in a twisted snaffle. I showed you that. And I'd like to move into a shanked snaffle and I'll tell you why when I put it on. But first I want to show you some of my prerequisites. So I've been working on my prerequisites before I switch bits. One of which is being able to bend and counter bend. Another one is being able to start the spin, step around at least 180 degrees. And so right now I'm going to show you where my bend and counter bend is. So I'm going to get this circle established right here. I'm going to lock my left hand onto my left leg. And then I'm going to take him at a trot and lead him. Notice on my right hand that my right hand is the the rein is just draped across my thumb. This is not a tug of war. And notice that his mouth is very quiet. The reason his mouth is quiet is because he understands the lessons. The reason I don't have to pull real hard is because he understands the lesson. So I look off to the right. I lead him to the right. Both of my legs are driving him forward. He's following the feel of the right rein, even though the left rein is anchored and telling him where to bend. That is a passing grade for bend and counter bend, bending to the left. Now I'm going to come around here, switch my bend to the right. Same thing this direction, I'm going to get back over here. 
establish my bending circle. Again, bending means I'm traveling, in this case, to the right, and I can see his right eye. That means I'm bending. I've anchored my hand now. I'm going to lead him out to the left. Counter bending is when I'm traveling a direction, in this case, to the left, and I can see his right eye. So he's bending enough that I can see his right eye. No loping. All I did there was back off on driving him forward, and he came back down to the trot. I'm going to do that one more time. Pretty good right there. So you can see the shoulder control, and you can see that his mouth is really pretty quiet because he understands the lesson. So that is one of the prerequisites before I will go ahead and switch up in bit. The other one is that I need to be able to step him around. And if you've been watching the last few episodes, you've seen where I introduced, excuse you, Jack, you can see where I've introduced the spin, and I want to go ahead and show you where that's at. I made, a, when I did the little demonstration at the beginning, I made the comment that I had been working on the right spin. I had felt like his left was better than his right previously, so I've been ending with the right spin. What that's caused is that's caused him, like I showed you at the beginning, to really be thinking, and we'll just test him right now. All I'm going to do is just sit here. I'm just going to step on the gas. Again, we've got the going backwards because he's thinking we always end going backwards or we end going to the right. So he's telling me I've been really consistent. <laughs> and so I'm going to go ahead and take his offer of the right spin, and I'm going to just drop the rhythm with my inside leg and carry a rhythm with my outside leg, lead him around. Whoa. And so his spin is coming around. Right now I want to show you the spin more because I want you to be having the thought in mind before I switch up and bridle. I won't switch him out of a snaffle, whether it's a smooth snaffle or twisted snaffle. The only reason I switch back and forth is he was getting to where he was pulling on me pretty hard in the smooth because he was saying he was real confident. I didn't feel he was ready to move up out of, a sh out, out of a smooth snaffle into a shanked bit. I still couldn't bend and counter bend and spin the way I wanted to. So I kept him in a snaffle, which doesn't have shanks, but I put it in the twisted wire so he'd lighten up and stop pulling on me. I want him to be not be afraid of making contact. Now I'm going to work on the spin just a little bit. The first thing you're going to see me do is really step on the gas there. You're going to see me go back to something I've been doing right from the beginning, which is parking my outside hand, outside rein on the saddle horn. Now I'm going to bend him around. I still notice that I'm still not a huge fan of how he tips his head. I've been saying that since I was lunging him, but I'm going to work on that later. But I'm just right now worried about being able to bring his head somewhere around 45 degrees and keep the forward motion and have him trot. That's good. I'm going to back off. That means I'm going to let him slow down, then I'm going to offer him the spin. He just asked about stopping when you saw him straighten out there, and I said, nope. Whoa. And so this is where his, his stepping is at right now. I'm, I'm happy with it because he's allowing me to handle him. That means I can pick up and pull on the bridle rein. I can use my legs to drive him forward, and he's listening all during that. He's not frantically running away, and he's not dull and fighting me. So I'm really happy with where he's at in the spin. I'm not going to really focus on it right now, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what the other direction looks like so that I can show you a couple more things before we run out of time. I'm going to go ahead and ask him to go forward again. He's still asking me the question about backing up because I've been ending every ride on the back up. I steered him off to the left. I'm going to do the same thing to the left that I just did to the right. Ask him to go forward. He's pretty light. You'll be able to notice that in the videos if you watch my hands because if you see this left hand is holding the reins, just barely. It's just laid over there. 
And so that can show you, but it's also a way that I make sure I'm being light when I communicate with him. I don't hold the rein with a death grip. It's hard to have a lot of feel if you're holding the rein with a death grip. Happy with the forward motion, happy with the amount of bend, back off. Let him come down to the walk. Then take my inside leg off, offer him the left spin, carrying a little bit of a rhythm with the outside leg. Not to rush him, but just to help him stay in it. I'm okay with the fact that he's moving around here. What's going on is he's doing real good steps right in his front end, right through some of the spots. Then he steps forward. Whoa. I'm okay with that because the spin needs to have forward motion. I will be drawing him back into that spin as he gets more broke. So that doesn't worry me at all. I'm excited that he's hunting the spin. That's what we call it when you see them just asking that question he was asking at the beginning. Can I spin now? So he's really hunting the spin. So that's all we're going to do today for the spins. And what I want to show you before I switch the bridles, because what's going to happen is the day after tomorrow, Jack's going to get his first sliders on. And so I don't want to change too many things at the same time, but I'm in a place where I'd like to change up in bits. But I want to show you what his stop looks like right now before we get into really working on it. Kind of where is natural, just kind of what a colt who kind of wants to stop does with their body, but they haven't been trained yet. Whoa. He doesn't really know the word woe. So that's just where his natural kind of stop is. I'm going to do a couple more and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to start working on this. He has no idea what the word woe means. He does notice when I stop riding forward. Let me show you just a couple of the things I'm going to work on there before we switch the bit. What I'm going to do to reinforce woe is I'm going to start introducing the word, first of all, because I haven't really used it with him very much, and I want to start introducing the idea of backing up with my legs. So I'm going to say the word, whoo, and then I'm going to pick up. He noticed that I stopped riding. I'm going to pick up and ask him to back up. Very good. I'm going to give him a little bit of a break here, but then I'm going to introduce a whole new concept right now. Not that I'm going to use it a lot. I just want to introduce it. And that's going to be that I'm going to bring my legs forward and tap him up here to help with the backup. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to start to tap him with my legs up here. He took a step back because he's been thinking back. So I'm going to tap him up here. He's th thinking about going forward. I'm going to continue tapping. I'm going to hold. I'm asking him to back up with the reins while continuing to tap with the legs. As soon as he went backwards, I released. Again, legs forward. Jack's looking confused. Head up, ears forward. He's like, legs mean go forward. And I'm going to say, no, legs mean take a step back when they're up here in your shoulder. I wouldn't teach this unless I was confident that I could get him to go forward. And I am confident I can get him to go forward. One more time, just for fun. 
bring the legs forward, start to tap. He backs up, I quit. So hopefully if all goes well, the next time you see Jack, he'll be wearing some little baby sliders and we'll get to get started on our actual sliding stop training. Thanks for joining us. I love you, Jack. Join us next week for another episode of Jack.